welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very exciting video inspired by two of my best friends here on YouTube, Angelica and Amy. I will go ahead and link their videos and channels down in my description box. So if you haven't heard of them already, which is shocking, go ahead and check them out. Their videos were so fun and I was so inspired by the comments in their videos that I thought, hey, let me just do my own version because I've had my fair share of experiences with indie brands and I thought it would be fun to do a tan girls version of mistakes I think indie brands make and yeah it's gonna be a little fun we're gonna get a little scandalous so if you guys are interested in seeing what I am about to spew just keep watching so here goes the first thing I wrote down is one of the biggest mistakes I think indie brands make is not being likable. So this is interesting because you don't want to be fake, I get that, but you want to be likable. You want to reply to as many DMs as you can. You want to always be polite. You always want to address your customer by their first name if they have that in their handle or I like to, you know, even when I talk to you guys, if I don't know your names, I do like to say, like hey babe or hey gal or hey dear or something you know something that forms that bond I don't think that is in ingenuous is that a word I can't remember but I think it really shows your customer that you care I think it's important to be likable if you are a indie brand or an indie brand owner you know trying to put your best foot forward always thanking people being gracious there's so many indie brands that kill it at that they comment on people's pictures they at least throw them a like or a heart I think that stuff is so important because guess what as much as a brand wants people to interact with their content on their social media platforms influencers your customers love also being acknowledged love their existence being acknowledged so I think any brand that is trying to compete in the current market needs to make sure that they are likable and whoever is running their socials really needs to make a huge effort to reach out to customers and create bonds and relationships so that is my number one thing I think a lot of indie brands don't think about that I think sometimes they can feel like customers are so high maintenance or they are like inconvenienced by people asking the same questions over and over again and I don't think that's the right approach a really good example of a likable Instagram brand I would say is Cleonade I've had nothing but good experiences and I know their social media channels are managed by multiple people but whoever you're talking to they always have a good attitude they always put you first it doesn't matter I'm sure how many people ask them the same question over and over again I think across the board most people have had really good experiences with them so I definitely wanted to give them a shout out but that is my number one point is to be likable so the next mistake I think indie brands make is not sending PR to a variety of people now I work for a small business so I always tend to empathize with a business I do see it from an influencer point of view a beauty blogger point of view as well because some indie brands they expect youtubers to make the purchase and review the product and the only swatches you'll see on the brand's front is on their own skin tone which I understand to a point like if you're really small if you don't have a huge budget that may be hard to do but there's so many other ways to compensate influencers you can you know speak to them build that bond and say hey you know I haven't really got the budget to maybe pay you right away but maybe I can send you some product and if you like it you can give us some swatches and we can give you like you know a gift card to our store or I can give you like a target gift card something to just show a little bit of appreciation so I don't think the whole like excuse really like you can never really say you're that small that you can't afford it because at the end of the day you do have a makeup brand and I feel like if you were trying to make money like if your main goal is to like feed your family and make money maybe like the first thing you do wouldn't be oh let me work for a beauty brand or make my own brand you would probably you know have a full-time job or have like some kind of income coming in so I I do always think like oh you know it's so hard because 
these indie brands don't have advertising budgets, but I think there's definitely ways to compensate people for their time other than in payment form. And I know a lot of beauty brands have really great relationships with smaller influencers. And I'm not saying you should exploit influencers, like you shouldn't just expect people to pay for your product and then swatch it and use the product and not give them credit. That's not what I'm saying. But I think there's definitely ways brands can work around any obstacles, um, whether it's reaching out to their influencers or like friends that are influencers or even contacting family members. I think that if I was an indie brand and I had to swatch on different skin tones, I'd definitely be asking my dad, who's much darker than me, my husband is lighter than me, like I would be reaching into every resource I had. So I feel like that's definitely something that indie brands don't do enough of. And of course, different age groups, if they are targeting different categories, I think it would be really cool if they could just send to a more diverse group of people. I think it's also important that indie brands take a look at who they're sending their PR to. And if your whole list is the exact same skin tone, maybe doing some kind of rotating PR so that you can also include some light skin tone, some medium, some deep, some deep dark, like include everyone because I think that's just best for your brand to be very honest. So the next thing I wrote down is not packaging their products well. So things that break in shipping. Another huge shout out to Cleonade because I know a lot of you have been receiving your stained glass eyeshadows and if you guys have seen Cleonad unboxings, you'll see how much, I keep saying their name wrong. If you guys have seen Cleonad, uh, Cleo, if you guys have seen Cleonad unboxings, you'll see how much bubble wrap those girls put on those shadows. And yes, it is wasteful, but guess what? When you're shipping $20 eyeshadow pans across countries and continents, yeah, I'd rather them use extra bubble wrap so they don't have to send replacements and things like that. So even though they are putting in a lot of money into making sure those things are securely wrapped, I think in the long term they're cutting down on waste because if the shadows get to you in top-notch condition the first time, then they don't have to spend money sending it to you the second time. So that is a mistake I think a lot of indie brands make because they don't package their products well enough and things arrive broken and then you know a lot of customers love to flock to social media to show their broken palettes and be like oh my gosh like look at my shadows they're so broken and unfortunately sometimes that's the only way we can get a brand's attention but I think that brands can do their due diligence and make sure they are packaging things appropriately. Okay, number four, price inconsistencies. I think the one brand I know for sure is guilty of this is Color Drain. They've gotten a lot better recently, but when I first started shopping Color Drain, I felt like their prices were a mess. So I think their Queen of Hearts palette was like in the $50 range, but when they came out with those mini eyeshadow palettes, I think they were originally almost 30, I think they were almost $40. I feel like I remember that I paid $38 for those mini eyeshadow palettes. And at the time I couldn't afford to buy all four, so I bought two of them and I was just so heartbroken because they were so spendy and I didn't understand. And then over time they did sales and then I think they finally just changed the price of those palettes because I thought it didn't make any sense because some of their bigger palettes were basically a better deal than buying their mini palettes. And I just think that when you are a makeup brand, no matter what size, it's important that you price your products appropriately. If you're gonna have everything be like a high-end indie brand price, then make sure you're consistent across the board instead of having like variations in prices because it really confuses customers and it makes you seem kind of incompetent in my opinion. Okay, so number five is really, really high shipping prices. So now I feel like I have a little bit I can add on this as a person that works in online retail sales. So most palettes should be able to ship first class mail. Like if you're shipping something and it's under a pound, you can send it first class mail. 
Typically, that's gonna run you maybe on the high end $5. So I don't know why indie brands don't look into offering that option to customers. I know for me personally, I hate paying expensive shipping. And a lot of the times it does really like you know, turn me off from pur making purchases on websites. And I think it's important for brands to really examine their shipping prices. Of course, I understand, like, it's not the indie brand's job to, like, absorb all that cost. But I think that one really ties into the pricing as well. Sometimes it might even make sense for me to pay a little bit more of the product to get free shipping because at least that way, in my mind, psychologically it makes me think I'm paying for the product versus like spending 10 to $15 on shipping, especially if it's within the United States. I get really baffled at how expensive shipping can be because even if you're a regular person, you should be able to get that first class price. As far as I know, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I know there's people that work the postal service that are also beauty YouTubers. So I would be so curious to hear like a postal service worker's opinion on beauty YouTube and like shipping specifically for indie brands. I think that would be a really interesting video. But from what I know, most eyeshadow palettes don't weigh a pound. So you should be able to ship a lot of things for quite a minimal charge and when I go on an indie website and I see like $10 shipping it's an automatic red flag for me because I'm like why is your shipping that expensive like it shouldn't be that high so that may be an unpopular opinion of mine but I'm just I mean I'm just giving you guys my list of mistakes I think indie brands make and I think overcharging on shipping is a big one. Okay, number six. This one I think Angie and Amy both talked about and it is websites that are tough to shop. Now, don't get me wrong, I know websites are expensive to make. Again, in our business, we have a web designer and he costs a pretty penny so I can totally understand brands not being able to afford a fully developed website but I think it's definitely something that brands need to save up for and use that saving towards to build a better brand. Having an easy to shop website is one of the best ways to get business to your indie brand and don't even get me started on how many people have told me I want to buy from this brand but I hate their website and I totally understand some of my big offenders are definitely JD Glow I've heard so many people complain about JD Glow's website the other one is Sydney Grace just cuz it's so hard to like sort through their eyeshadows so I think they had said that they're moving to a new site soon I know there's a bunch of other websites too that are moving to like Shopify which from what I can tell Shopify is a really great platform for makeup websites. I've shopped so many Shopify sites. I think Jeffree Star is Shopify. Kylie is on Shopify. So it's definitely worth the investment for brands to get on platforms like that. And definitely maybe you can find somebody that's like a design student or somebody that can do some work to help with that stuff, I think it's definitely worth the investment because it makes your customer's life easy and that's definitely a big part of being a successful brand. Okay, the number seven mistake that indie brands make is they don't have a social media strategy. So this is the same for brands, YouTubers, everybody that's trying to make it as a influencer these days you know we just post things no rhyme or reason and I think that there are so many brands that really don't think about this and I think you know having cohesion is important having a aesthetic in your socials so if you have an Instagram making sure that you are posting you know, one to two times a day, making sure you're consistently sharing things and products, swatches. You can basically be your biggest cheerleader on social media if you manage that right. And I don't think a lot of brands do. It is always a afterthought. And I think that a lot of brands aren't capitalizing on the potential of social media to help build their brand. So I think it would be 
be very exciting to see more brands doing things like contests, more shares for their influencers. Like if you have social media influencers that you work with, giving them shout outs. I love seeing influencers take over brand Instagram stories. I think that's so fun. I've seen a lot of bigger brands do that, but I think it would be really fun to see indie brands do collaborations like that. I love seeing indie brands share videos that influencers have made mentioning their products, swatch parties, things like that I think are so important. And indie brands can really use those to leverage their brand name. And I don't think they do that enough. So all of that really goes into having a social media strategy, having things mapped out, having your new product launches announced. One thing I see a lot of brands not do well is they'll have a new collection coming and they'll sneak peek it for like 300 years and then they'll do one swatch photo of the shades and that's all you have to go on. I saw a brand do this very recently. They came out with a spring collection and the only swatches they had was one swatch picture and I was like, you should make a video swatching your shadows so I know what they'll look like when you swatch them. Because if you just post a static image, that could be photoshopped, you could have, you know, made it look more pigmented than it is. Like, I don't understand why brands don't give out more information than is necessary. I think that is hugely important. And so, yeah, Social media strategy, very, very important and not enough brands do it. Okay, number eight is choosing the wrong people to represent your brand. I know this is always kind of put on the influencer. Like most people say like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they chose this person to collab with and they are so-and-so and they're this and that. And it's like, why aren't brands held accountable for who they collab with or who they share or who they post? If you are working with somebody, make sure you do your research on them. Maybe scroll past like the first three posts on their Instagram, check out their history, watch some of their videos. Like maybe don't just like, you know, pony up and sign up with the first person you see, offer them a collab. Same to influencers, but I think brands should be held accountable too of who they are partnering with, collabing with, making sure like they don't have any past, they don't have any recent like drama that they're in. I think all of that is really important for brands to do because it can definitely be a turn off to consumers if they see brands collabing with people that they've never seen use that product like for example say all of a sudden I got a sponsorship for like L'Oreal foundation and you guys are like I've literally never seen Karen use L'Oreal foundation like what why is she all of a sudden collabing with L'Oreal or you know something I don't know think of any indie brand so I think that's important because we always accuse influencers and say like, oh my God, I can't believe you're using XYZ brand. That's so horrible of you. But it's the same thing for brands. Like you, you know, if you're gonna like that one chick that like beat her dog on the internet or something, it's like, how is she, like, don't collab with people that have gotten themselves into drama. There's plenty of other people that haven't, so. That's my spiel on that. Okay, the 10th mistake I think a lot of indie brands make is not showing people who they are. I think it's a little bit suspicious. I mean, I know there's some brands that, I don't know, I really don't know, it's hard because I know there are some indie brands that the owners have their own Instagram and then they do Instagram posts on their brand's page. Some brands, I have no idea who they are. I have no idea what they look like, where they live, what they do, why they got into the game. Like, I have no idea. And I think integrating yourself with your brand is kind of a cool touch. I think most people are emotionally attached, emotionally invested in the brands they buy from. And I think using your personal self to leverage that is kind of a good idea. Even if you're not like out there all the time, I, I would love to be able to pull up indie brands websites and be like, oh look, this is the about you section. Here is the owner. This is what she looks like. This is her skin tone. 
these are her favorite things about YouTube. These are some of her favorite YouTubers. These are some of her favorite colors. She loves to wear neutral eyeshadows, not colorful eyeshadows. Like, I love knowing those little personal tidbits about brand owners. So I think that if you do have an indie brand, it's always fun to bring a little bit of your personality to your brand. <laughs> Somebody left the door to my makeup room open and Teddy decided to sneak in here. Ah! You guys haven't seen him in a while, so he's been up to, what have you been up to, Teddy? Just quarantine and chilling. Just quarantine and chilling. Okay. <laughs> He's a character. Okay, so my 11th point really ties into number 10, and that is getting emotional. So Amy and Angie, I think, both talked about this as well, because I know for sure, like, Juvia's Place has gotten into a lot of trouble with their owner kind of popping off on Twitter when there was that whole, like, Jackie, Ina, Alyssa, I don't even remember, but there was, like, so much drama on Twitter that day, I was just like, Oh my god, like I don't need this in my life right now. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely a skill to be able to keep composure and I know people say their brands are like their babies. I know for me, even reading mean comments is tough. Like I usually don't get mean comments but every once in a while I will get a mean comment and I'm like, oh that was rough like it really does affect you i mean it, i think it takes a lot of time before people can just digest mean comments and not let it get to them so i totally understand when brand owners like freak out but i think it's one of those times where you really need to be like okay i need to put my phone down i need to go yell into a empty room <laughs> and then come back and handle the situation like a professional and I think that's just a business life tip in general but it's definitely one indie brands could learn and it's important and I think Amy had said you know you could always get a social manager you don't need to do it all yourself so if you're too attached it's always good to have somebody else that's a little bit more detached that can kind of roll with the punches and always thank people for their feedback whether it is critical or constructive you know some people think constructive criticism is just criticism they just pop off about things without really understanding the full spectrum of it and yeah i think that's something that everyone can learn from is try not to get overly emotional on the internet <laughs> Number 12. This one is kind of shady, so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, but not paying your bills. Guess what, indie brands? People talk, whether it's on social media, off social media, behind closed doors, with open doors, but most of the time, if you're being shady on the internet, somebody will find out and somebody will tell somebody else, and then before you know it, everyone knows what's going on. So I think it's really important to be smart have your contracts in writing, have your payment amounts agreed upon before you get into contracts with influencers or you whatever it is you're doing because not paying your bills, it will come back to haunt you. We've seen so many influencers expose brands that are late on payments, on collabs and things like that. I personally haven't had any run-ins of that sort but it's scary i i i think it would be terrifying to try and navigate my way out of that i recently heard that this brand i purchased from because i featured them in a monthly haul somebody messaged me and they're like oh yeah i heard from somewhere that this brand did this and then they didn't pay and i was just like oh my god like it's crazy so it's very easy for people to find things out and you have to be able to back yourself up so make sure all your i's are dotted and t's are crossed is that what people say not quite sure but definitely a good tip for indie brands in my opinion Okay, number 13, I feel like goes without saying, but there is a shocking amount of comments in my comment section, which is not even that big of a comment section, where people tell me about bad customer service experiences. And I'm like, what is going on? Because usually it's brands that I've had good experiences with. I mean, usually I'm not 
buying more than one thing from a brand that I've had a bad customer service experience with, I've actually, knock on wood, I don't think I've ever really had any nasty interactions with brands myself, but even recently I posted a video just the other day with a Give Me Glow palette and so many people told me how the owner is like snarky and they're just like, they never restock. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like I've had nothing but good experiences with Give Me Glow, but it blows my mind. So I'm like, why aren't they more careful? Now to Cleonut Cosmetics Horn, but I've heard nothing but good things about their customer service. I've had amazing experiences with their customer service, but even them recently with their stained glass collection, like they got reamed by the internet for not having enough stock and this and that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And they're one of the good ones. So I think good customer service is so basic, but so many brands struggle at having good customer service experiences. And I think that's unacceptable at this point. Like if you want to survive it doesn't matter if you're indie or you're one man show or two man show or whatever it is you need to make sure that every customer interaction you have is a positive one and if somebody's having some issue you need to make sure that gets resolved and communicate with your customers because things can go south real quick for you in this space Okay, my next point, I really like this one because honestly, it's true. I wrote down that having good product isn't good enough. That isn't the only thing you have to offer to your customers. Customers these days, we care about good product. We care about good service, good packaging, a good website. Like you need to be all around excelling at your brand. If you only have the best eyeshadows on planet earth, but you don't have good photography, you can't take a picture to save your life. You don't know how to write a blog post to save your life. You can't edit a YouTube video or you don't know how to do PR well your brand's not really gonna survive so I think when you're getting into the indie market or anyone that wants to start a business it's so important that you try and educate yourself in all these different facets and you don't have to be a hundred percent at everything but having a little bit having a little bit of knowledge on each of those avenues is so important using your allies talking to your influencer friends or talking to people that want to support your brand and getting advice, getting feedback from them every time you launch a new product or you know, if somebody has a bad experience with you or you see a comment addressing all that stuff and learning from it is so, so important. So for me, I think a lot of brands think that, oh, I have the best eyeshadow formula so my customers will just flock to me. That is not the case at all. It doesn't matter how good your product is, if you don't know how to talk to people, if you don't know how to sell, or if you don't have somebody that knows how to do those things, your brand it's most likely not gonna make it. The last thing I wrote down, this is just another life skill in general, communication is key. This is, I couldn't say this enough, and I think it's a big one for even me. Um, communicating with my subscribers and just keeping you guys in the loop. The other huge thing is, I think people think that if you mention something once, that means everyone on the internet is already aware and I don't think that's the case at all. Um, if you post something about a collection or something and you post it one time and you think that people are going to remember, that's not the case. I was listening to a very informative podcast the other day and it was so funny. It was kind of one geared for influencers but the person I was watching said, People don't care about you. People don't have the time. And that's so true. If the information isn't easy to access, like how many Instagram brands, how many indie makeup brands have you guys seen post about a new collection, but then they don't say what date it's coming out, what time it's coming out, what the price is going to be. Like it's so irritating. And it's like, we're all busy. We don't have time to sit and scroll through your eight different posts about 
when your product is coming out. Making that information easy to access is so key to your customers. Making sure your coupon codes work, making sure that maybe you have a highlight that says active coupon codes. Like that's something I really appreciate even with influencers when they post about a product and then they give you their affiliate link or they give you a coupon code because nobody has time to go looking for your code. So I think brands need to be mindful of that. It's not just influencers that want to make people's lives easy. You have to communicate well and make things easy for your customers. Another reason I want to shout out Cleonad here is because they are so good at this. They not only post their messages on their stories, on their actual feed, they also always send customers email updates and I think that's great. If you are getting annoying with your updates, people will just unsubscribe from your emails and that's okay. I would rather be over informed than under informed and they always update if they have delays, they try to post, they post all the time on their socials if they are having issues with shipping or keeping you updated on the coronavirus or whatever. It's always so important for brands to communicate with their customers. So that is my last point. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's a little bit sassy. I would love to hear your thoughts on some of these comments. I'll go ahead and catch you guys there. You guys know I love talking to you guys in my comment section. I will link some videos for you guys to keep watching more of my content and I will see you in my next one soon. Bye guys.